A definite, systematic structure can be found in the organisation of time on Earth, and the megalithic monuments appear to be measuring and presenting this structure in space in the forms they actualised. The Stone Age could only do this by conducting astronomy on horizon events such as sun rises and moon sets, counting time through units of length and building geometries that aligned to the horizon and compared counted lengths using geometry. The latitude of Karnak is very special as the sun on the horizon at winter and summer solstice rises at the angle of a 345 triangle so that this geometry is found everywhere relative to east. It is also true at Karnak that every 6800 days the moon rises across the diagonal of a simple square and half of that 3400 days later it can only rise across the diagonal of a double square so the range during that period is between a single square's diagonal and a double square's diagonal. These key understandings of the special latitude of Karnak started to emerge with Alexander Tom who surveyed the monuments in the early 1970s and who spotted the relevance of the 345 geometry at Karnak for showing the solstitial sun. The DU Versity tour of 2004 was facilitated by Howard Crowhurst, who had worked in a Gurdjieff group there studying the monuments, and he had realised the single and double square relationships for the moon by 2007. I have since discovered that the alignments of the moon and the sun at Karnak can be integrated into a simple pattern of 16 squares when these are organized as to form a single square of 4 by 4 squares. This grid then harmonizes with Howard Crowhurst's proposal in the last year that the primary tool for laying out the monuments was a system of multiple squares and their diagonals, a system for practically organizing space within the monuments. So we can then ask how did the megalith builders record the structure of time that itself has relative time periods that form diagonals across multiple squares? My brother and I have discovered evidence of how the megalithic astronomers worked out the structure of time within the monuments of Karnak Firstly at Lemanio and secondly at Lemenek. At Lemanio, the counting of time was started by using a constant inch so as to count days and find the length of three solar years, that being 1095 inches and three quarters. Three lunar years of 36 months was then also counted and it, this is a length of 1,063 day inches. By interpreting Lemanio as being counted in day inches, one finds that the difference between three lunar years and three solar years is exactly the length of the megalithic yard that was then used to build all the subsequent monuments, or many of them, in Karnak. We can then see that at Karnak the astronomers had used astronomy, geometry and metrology as their three key tools for understanding cosmic time and laying out the monuments to form a representation of it. Not only were these monuments able to record things but they also had the shape of the thing they were recording. Furthermore, through this we can see that angles on the horizon and lengths of time are harmonized using this technique of squares to form a unified grid. 
we can now go on to have a look at the types of structural time that they were able to discover and see how the monuments relate to them. On Earth we are surrounded by the Sun, Moon, planets and stars all moving around us and giving form to cosmic time on Earth. Each aspect of celestial movement gives rise to cycles of different duration that interdivide with one another in significant ways. Each celestial cycle operates like a boundary within which a different level of order is revealed and this makes cosmic time like a glass onion where each boundary contains lesser cycles and is also held within larger cycles. We have seen that at Lamanio the megalithic astronomers used the anniversary of three solar years to generate the megalithic yard. But this anniversary is not very accurate and not until 19 years pass are the Sun, Moon and stars in an identical configuration. This is true for any moment that 19 years later the Sun, Moon and stars will be in the same positions relative to each other. This fact is likely to have been an achievement of higher intelligence and can be investigated. For the moon to have the same stars behind it, it must have completed a complete number of orbits in 19 years. In fact it has completed 254 orbits. Since the sun is also illuminating the moon in the same way, its phase, 19 years later, must equal 254 minus 19 lunar months. That is, there are 235 months in 19 years. We know that a year is a, the complete movement of the sun through the stars. We also know a lunar orbit is similarly the complete movement of the moon through the stars. However, a day, as we count it on Earth, is the rotation of the Earth plus a small extra catch-up with a moving sun of about four minutes. That is, the sun moves about four minutes of Earth rotation every day. An Earth day is 366 of these catch-up periods, so that in 365, one less, the Earth rotates once relative to the stars, a period of time we call the sidereal day. Now this unit of time, which I call the chronon, also divides into the lunar orbit 10,000 times. We therefore see that a unit of time formed by the rotation of the Earth and the movement of the Sun divides into the lunar orbit, which then in turn divides into the 19-year period. This chronon of nearly four minutes length appears to be presented by the Western Cromlech at Lemenek, since the perimeter of its egg shape is 10,000 inches long. We also find that the same perimeter points to the 19 year cycle since there are 254 meters in 10,000 inches. This means that the formula of the meter is therefore 10,000 inches over 254. The meter is also involved at Lemanio, in that a lunar year, counted in inches, is found to be 9 meters long, 
so that one month must be 9 over 12 meters whilst also being 29.53 day inches of Lamanio's day counting. It therefore appears that the inch as a day and the inch as a chronon, one 366th of a day, were integrated in the meter so as to embrace all aspects of the 19 year cycle, including the rotation of the earth and the orbit of the moon.